Okay. Hello, everybody. I hope all is well. Um, this is Alex Stanford. I'm here to uh, talk to you a little bit about mug clubs. I'm with uh, John Harrison. He runs a uh, bar on his own, and he also has a website called mugclubs.com. It's a really cool website that helps people automatically manage a lot of their own mug clubs and um, manage all of the data and things regarding how far along people are with how many beers they've checked in, and a bunch of other cool things. And we'll get into all of that in a little bit. Um, today we're going to talk a little bit about how to run your own mug club effectively. So um, how's it going, John? Good, Alex. How you doing today? All right, man. So um, why don't you tell me a little bit about, a little bit about your background and uh, how, how you came to come up with this tool called Mug Clubs. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let's start with the important stuff first. Uh, I'm married to my beautiful wife, Heather. We have a brand new four-month-old baby boy named Liam, who we're hmm. really excited about, very proud of, uh, and very sleep deprived over. Yeah, we gosh, I in, uh, in the New York City area. Uh, actually, in my full-time life, I work for a media company in New York City called Sun Spider. But then, as you mentioned, uh, I own a bar down in San Angelo, Texas, called the Penny Tap House, which we've had for a little over a year and a half now. And as part of having the bar, I decided to create a company called Mug Clubs to help bars and breweries host their own beer clubs, mug clubs, uh, using digital technology, as opposed to all the old paper and old school methods that used to be used. Ooh, you're busy. Um, that sounds cool. So um, how, how, does a, how does it work? I mean, how does a mug club typically work? For those who don't really know a lot about it, I know I've got a couple people on my email list who uh, a couple days ago I emailed them and asked them, you know, what do you want to know? And a lot of them weren't even sure what a mug club is. So I'd love to hear a little bit about how one works and what it does for you. Yeah, so a mug club, there's a lot of different ways. Okay, so we'll, we'll concentrate on the couple of top ways. Um, as most basic element, it's a marketing promotional program for bars and breweries to use to just give their customers an excuse to come back in either more often or to try different beers. Uh, so it's really just a way to entice your customers to try a different variety within your bar or your brewery, uh, and also just to build a little more customer rapport and loyalty and get them to come back in more often. And there's a couple of ways they can be run. Um, the traditional way that I'm most familiar with is that you'll get a list of, let's say, 100 or 150 different beers, and they're going to challenge you to try all those different beers, obviously over multiple settings. And <laughs> right. <laughs> that would be a long day. So as you go and make progress, you try all these different beers. They have them categorized by ales or lagers or IPAs or stouts or whatever else. Uh, and, you, you know, the, the goal is to try them all, um, A, because it's a challenge. But also, you know, if you want to learn more about beer, there's no better way to try something you otherwise never would than, you know, having some incentive to do so as part of one of these clubs. Um, I'm actually part of one of these where I live. Uh, I'm about halfway there through 75 of them, so I'm making progress. And, you know, if nothing else, it's a lot of fun. You obviously want to get to the end. You want to win the prize. But, you know, also it's given me a chance to try a lot of different cool stuff. It's like she's to go and have a couple of beers with my wife and my friends. So, you know, that, that's kind of how I've always done a mug club. Um, there's other alternatives where you can kind of, um, the customers will pay to be in this incentive program where they get their own custom mug and maybe they get discounts on drinks. That, in my mind, is not really what we're going after. Uh, we're really trying to give bars and breweries an opportunity to host a program that gives their customers an extra incentive to come in more often to drink different beers. And then lastly, there's kind of a loyalty program approach. And I kind of compare this to the coffee shop punch card program. Um, so it's not necessarily about trying 150 different beers. It's just, hey, you know, we know you like to come into our bar. We know you, you like beer, craft beer, regular beer, whatever it happens to be. And every time you drink one, we're going to punch your card. And after you've had, let's say, it's going to give you, you know, free appetizer or free beer or something like that. And, you know, that's more houses and uh, craft beer specialty establishments coming out. There, in my mind, they're a traditional mug club. This is more, hey, we're just kind of a regular mom and pop bar. But, you know, we want to host a mug club because we think people like coming in here and drinking beer. And we want to give them a little extra incentive to do so. Gotcha. That's cool. So it kind of gamifies the act of drinking <laughs> in a way. Right. Yeah, yeah, about ping pong balls and cards and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. Um, it actually reminds me a lot of uh, frequent flyer miles with airports. Uh, you know, if you think about the incentives that come from those, there's not a whole, there's not a whole lot of um, significant benefit. The, the biggest couple of things are basically you get a couple of small perks, but for the most part, people, more than anything, just enjoy 
watching that number get racked up. So uh, it makes it it makes it fun. It gives gives people a goal and in some way to uh, have some fun with it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, once in a while you get a free flight, and that's pretty cool too. So you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of all worlds. exactly, exactly. Cool. Okay. Um, so you, I assume that with your bar, you started, did you start running, trying to run a mug club without any kind of software or anything without your, your tool before? And, um, tell me a little bit about how that experience was, if, if that's true. Um, yeah. So the reason the mug clubs I did even came to be was we wanted to have a mug club at our bar. Um, but like I said, I have, I've been part of one up here, uh, in New Jersey for, probably about five years now. And I have seen all the bad things that happen with paper. Uh, my sister-in-law is part of the club. They have lost her sheet twice, so she's had to start over again. You know, every time she finishes a pier now, she takes out her phone and takes a picture of the sheet just to prove that you know she's drank as much as she says she has. <laughs> um, and it's a general nuisance. So you sit down, and the first thing you want to do is order your drink. Right? It's the first thing a waitress or a waiter will say to you, what do you want? And you know, normally you've already got the menu in hand, and you're, okay, I want my first beer. right? But when you're part of these clubs, you A, have to remember your membership number because they literally have hundreds if not thousands of pieces of paper stacked up in all these binders. So you have to remember your number. They have to take your number, go back to all the binders, dig out your sheet, and this takes like 10 to 15 minutes. And by the time they finally come back, then you have to figure out what you haven't drank yet. So you just still don't know what you want to drink. So they're going to go away again. And then they're going to come back 10 minutes later, and then you're going to order your beer. It takes you like 20 minutes to get your first drink. And speaking for myself, that's just not, that's not what I want. That's not good. Yeah, so that's not why I'm there. I'm not there to, to do paperwork, right? So gotcha. what I said to my the guy who runs my bar, my director, I said, listen, I want to do this, but there's no way the staff is going to deal with this garbage. And frankly, our customers are going to be kind of put off by it anyway. So I said, let's right. go search online. Someone's got to have an app or a website or something that does all this digitally, right? You know, we're in this great modern age. This, this should have been fixed by now. And we did all this research. We did all this looking. We did all this asking around. And because he knows lots of people in the industry. And no one had a solution for us. Oh. So it's kind of in that moment I said, well, I want to do this for my place, but I don't want to spend tens of thousands of dollars just to do it for my bar. But what if I created something that would work at any bar? You know, something that was any bar owner could use, uh, and we can sell it on like some sort of subscri subscription model. So that's how Buck Close came to be. So we're here because we knew of the challenges of using paper, the mess, the lost sheets, the wasted effort by the staff, uh, and we want to say digital, which is how this came about. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, that's cool. Um, so it sounds like just from the way you were talking there in general, just it paper just is a real bummer. I mean, it's real difficult to work with, really slows down the process. Cool. And it almost, it sounds like doing it that way, if you aren't cautious and you don't run it just right, it could actually hurt you more than help you, which you don't want that. That's the whole reason why we're doing this is to help. So yeah, we want to make our customers happy. You drink 100 beers out of 150. After two years, you find out you got to start over again. You're not going to be happy, for sure. <laughs> and you're certainly not going to be in the mud club next time. And also, obviously, yeah. it's a bar, right? Bars are messy. There's beer being spilled. There's food. There's all this other stuff going on. Paper in a bar. I couldn't think of a worse thing to put in a bar than shoot paper. Yeah. You know, just, the one I have looks like it's been through a hurricane. You know, it's, <laughs> fun, it's been dropped. So, yeah, it's just not a good medium. To take care of, it's not going to be taken care of in that environment, which we have. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so that's cool. So why don't you tell me a little bit about um, the tiers? You you made mention somewhere in there earlier about how people get prizes and they they win and what happens. What kind of prizes do you do in your bar, and and what kind of prizes do you think make sense? Yeah, so you know, the idea of the tiers are, you know, if you're going to put a really ambitious goal out there, like 150 different beers, you want people to kind of get rewarded along the way. You don't want to wait, have to make them wait a year or two to finally claim a prize. So we put in the idea of having actual you know, tiers, milestones along the way. So after you drink your 10th beer, your 25th beer, so on and so forth, you win a prize. And then ultimately, when you reach the 150 or whatever number you want to set forward, that's kind of the big, you know, the, the bells and whistles go off. You're a one millionth customer. Here's your gigantic check type of prize. But gotcha. you know, what we use at our bar is, yeah, it's nothing really over the top fancy. Um, but, you know, we give away either um, some sort of chouch gear branded uh, marketing materials like hats or keychains, bottle openers, T-shirts. Yes, And usually it's branded with either our bar's logo and our name or maybe it's, you know, something that's been 
uh, donate to the bar by like Budweiser or Coors or you know someone who wants to advertise their own products. And, you know, yeah. and places do that all the time, right? You walk into a bar, they're giving away free koozies and free you know bottle openers and stuff like that. Um, so we give those sorts of prizes away as we go. Um, we also have a kitchen, so we give away you know a free appetizer at one point, a free burger at another point. So you, you know you get a chance to try the food and you know do something different than just drinking the beer. Uh, and you know you can do different things. And, and we're in Texas. You can't give away alcohol in Texas. And we, we play by the rules. But I know there are certain states where you, they can give away a free shot or a free glass of beer or uh, you know a free six pack or something like that. So you know you, you can make it as rich or as diverse as you wanted to. Um, but you know I think the reality is something in the five to ten dollar range. Maybe if you want to be a little extravagant, something in the fifteen dollar range. You know it's it's about giving the customer some something to shoot for them. You know they're gonna probably drink ten beers anyway, so if they get a free T-shirt for doing it, everyone's really happy. Uh, and obviously they're walking around wearing a T-shirt, which is nice too. Right. Yeah. And that's that's great. And some a couple of things that I really like about this strategy as a whole is um, your branded prizes, your hats, your shirts, and all of those things ultimately end up going to your best customers. You know what yep. I mean? They ultimately end up going to the people who are ultimately going to be your brand ambassadors either way. Mm -hmm. So instead of going to a, and I, I mean, not necessarily instead of, but whenever you go to a, um, like a beer event or something like that, where, you know, you've got a whole bunch of beer bottle openers and t-shirts and, and other swag that you're just going to hand out to people. Um, you have no idea if that person's ever going to think of your brand again, or ever even care about, you know, your brand. But the, the thing that's significant about this is, these people are earning that stuff, you know, for one, they're earning that stuff in their mind, they're earning it. And then two, they're also coming to your bar enough to like it enough to want to wear that stuff. So the probability that the things that you're giving them is going to get used and um, represented is a lot higher. You know, you're not just throwing shirts out and hoping for the best. You're getting somebody who's in some capacity invested into your business, interested in, actually making you know and interested in what you have to offer and will probably be happy to flaunt it and not just that but another really cool thing that i love about this is if you have special um swag and it doesn't have to be expensive gear just just anything at all that you really only give out to people who get some kind of success in the mug club it's a great status symbol i mean just a just even a mug i mean you get a you get um maybe a higher end one or something like that's a stoneware mug or something kind of fancy that the person's allowed to use in your bar. Um, it's just that status thing. You know what I mean? They walk around and everybody in that bar who knows anything about the mug club or whatever knows just by looking at that person that they have that hat or they have that mug. That guy is, is, you know, in the mug into this, you know what I mean? It's the same thing as uh, with, with your frequent flyers, like what I talked about earlier, you know, the, the frequent flyer mile people, they get up and they get to go stand in line before everybody else just by a little bit, you know, and it's just based on that different tier. And it's not a huge benefit, but people go crazy for that just because of the status, you know, they stand up, they're in line before everybody else and everybody gets to see them with, with that success. Yep, I think that's absolutely right. I think there's two key points there, right? The first is like marketing's great, targeted marketing's better, but having a referral is in my mind the best thing. So yeah. to your point, you're giving away a t-shirt or a hat or something with your company's name on it, your bar, your brewery's name on it. And when someone says, hey man, it's kind of a, yeah, it's a cool hat, where'd you get it? Oh yeah, man, this is a bar I go to all the time. I've drank a hundred beers there. I'm part of this club that they do. Uh, and I go there all the time and I love it. Like that endorsement is worth 10 random hats just given away at some sort of festival or some sort of, you know, uh, your tasting event. So, you know, I think that's huge is you're not just getting to your point, your logo out there, you're getting someone who not only knows you, but likes you and is going to speak very highly of either your product or your establishment, which is, you know, I think a really great thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's awesome. Okay, cool. So, um, how do you promote your mug club in, in your own bar? I mean, how do you get people interested in it or to even know about it? Yeah. So I think the first is, uh, you start with your the customers who you already have a rapport with. So we advertise all over our bar to join our mug club. You know, we have our menu of all of our beers up on a chalkboard. It says there, you know, join or ask about our mug club today. Uh, we put table tents up on all the tables, which is something we provide through mugclubs.com. We hang posters on the wall. 
And we also use you know, the more traditional methods, right? You know, when we're advertising a beer special, we make sure we include on the Facebook post that we boost, you know, make sure you ask about our mug club when you come in, um, you know, to get, you know, $2 off your next beer or, you know, a free appetizer or something like that. We use it when we do the larger outside the bar advertising like Facebook and uh, radio. But then we actually use the bar itself as a means to advertise it. You know, we figure if we've already got you in there, there's a good chance you want to sign up and try this thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. So it's it's pretty it sounds pretty straightforward. You just bring it up in, in your own bar and you add some advertisements and talk to a talk about it, huh? Just and I guess that makes sense, um, because if they're in your bar and they're already having a drink and if they come around with any frequency, why wouldn't they want to join it? Yeah, and you know, you ask your staff, you tell your staff, your staff, hey, listen, you know, make sure you promote this. It's a good chance for you to bring in more customers, increase your tips, build a rapport. Because we all know that people who come in consistently tip better than people who show up every once in a while, right? So it's a chance for that right. to build a rapport with the customers. Um, and also, I mean, I know some bars who do it actually pay their staff to promote the mug club. So every every person who signs up under your check gets a buck or two bucks or something like that added to their paycheck at the end of the week. And honestly. To help create a loyal customer, that's a pretty low price to pay. We all pay a lot more than that to know that someone's going to come back, and it's better. yeah. That'll definitely motivate. Uh, that would definitely motivate your bartender or your your whoever's behind the bar to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, so before we uh, had this, before we started this stream, you made mention to me, and I looked a little bit online. It looks like um, you the Mug Clubs app that you run actually has some kind of. Um, some statistics inside of it, and it helps measure. Um, you can kind of get a, a grasp on what people think of your beers. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think you know what's most obvious when you're doing a mug club is the sales and marketing aspect of it. But we, you know, while we have technology and while we have an opportunity to use it, we thought, why not make the most out of it? And you know, going back to the the perilous paper example, you know, you've got this these hundred thousand sheets of paper stacked up in binders, you can't do anything with it. No one's gonna sit there and flip through the pages and see what people's buying, right? That's ridiculous. Right. But when you use an app, you know, you, you've got a database built, you've got all this technology. Um, we've already set up a website, which is how you run it. So we decided to give our customers access to a certain data and certain statistics associated with their club. Um, right now we have some basic stuff and we're gonna expand this, but we can tell you who your biggest mug club customers are. You know, so you want to post a top ten, like who's winning the mug club right now. You can do that. Um, mm -hmm. You can see how many customers you have and how many beers they've each drank. And we can also share with you which beers they like the best. And this, in my mind, at the early stages, is the most important thing. So when someone drinks a beer, we gotcha. Gotcha. before they can submit it, they have to rate it on a scale of one to five. That's right there in the app. They just touch how many stars they want to give it, and it records the customer's rating every time that they drink. And confirm. And it, you said drink. that does it before, before they actually get the credit for the thing for the well, uh, submission. Yeah, so they, they drink the beer and then they go to their app and say, "Okay, I drank a you know dogfish head sixty minute." And uh -huh. they, in order to submit it for approval, they have to rate. So oh, I see. Ask them to give us the number of stars. They submit it, and then at some point later in the process, someone from the bar will approve and say, "Yes, you know, Alex drank a dogfish head sixty minute." Um, well, what happens is it aggregates all this data. I hope you like that one. Uh, it <laughs> aggregates all the data so that you, as the owner, can say, "Okay, why well, this rep come in and pitch this, you know, quarter barrel?" He says, "Everyone's gonna love it. We're gonna charge this premium, but all the difference gonna love this beer." And then you look and you see ten people drank it, and the average rating is two point five stars. And you're like, "Okay, well, maybe this is really awesome somewhere else in the country, but my patrons don't like it. So lovely, but we're not upgrading to a half barrel. We're probably not buying another quarter barrel." I think that's also really. And you might even, and as a brewer, you may even see um, maybe a, a dip in ratings. So maybe you'll be making the same beer all the, even your flagships. You know what I mean? You're making your flagship for a while, and then all of a sudden, over the last week, your ratings went from five stars to two and a half stars. I mean, that might be a good strong indication that yeah. there's something wrong with that batch of beer or or something like that. So there's definitely a lot of. There's a lot of value in that. It actually reminds me of, um, of, of comp I mean, think about how many companies do this now. Um, look at, you know, like Giant Eagle and um, it's the first one that pops in my head. And Target does it too with their credit cards. Okay. You know, they, they push for these. Yeah, right. They push for these memberships and all this stuff so that they can collect that data and get an idea on your buying habits and with all that data, they're able to do some really incredible things. And, and I think that 
um, this mug club system is a really effective and simple way for a brewer to start to gather that data. And, um, you know, that's the first step toward being able to actually do anything with it is get, figuring out a way to get it in the first place. Yeah, how to get it, how to easily understand it, digest it. Just a quick example, we have one beer that we brought in that I will leave nameless uh, at our bar, and the first keg went really fast. And we bought a second one because the first one went really fast, and it just didn't sell. It didn't sell at all, and we couldn't figure out what happened. And then we started doing the Mug Clubs app, and all of a sudden we started seeing the ratings come in, two stars, two stars, three stars, one star. And we're like, oh, wow, okay, so they had this really cool marketing point. It had a cool name. And so people saw the tap head, and they're like, oh, yeah, I want to try that. Well, they didn't like it. Gotcha. But we had enough people come in and try it the first time that the first tap went down real fast. But then anyone who came back the second time didn't want anything to do with it. So if we had had the insight the first time, we could have spared ourselves the keg, second keg that we want to drink. And, you know, we could have gone something else to hopefully find a few other people like better. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. So basically all of your, all of your, all the people who come in with any frequency noticed that there was a new tap on the bar and said, hey, yeah, I want that. And then you ended up ripping right through that, that tap as a result. And then whenever you put the next one in, everybody who tried it the first time was like, yeah, I'm good on that. I don't want that yeah, again. Well, yeah. gotcha. Okay. gotcha. And I can also think about that in the context of a brewery. Like, you know, you're actually the one brewing the beer. How vitally important is that information? I'm like, yeah, yeah no no kidding. Kidding. we sold out all this beer for this, you know, this fall brew we did. And then next year, nobody buys it. Because it turns out the reason you sold it was everyone's wanted to try something new. Right. Yeah. Or conversely, you find out everyone loves it. Next season, you're not going to make the same batch. You're going to make two or three times as much because you know when you offer it again, everyone's going to want to come in and buy it. Right. Or, you know, maybe maybe you make an, uh, I mean, Oktoberfest is on my mind right now for obvious reasons, but sure. um, maybe you make an Oktoberfest beer and it's really in, you know, everybody buys it and you get low reviews. I mean, maybe just based on those reviews alone that next year, if you do another Oktoberfest, you would change the name and you would change the recipe and so that you, you know, you know what I mean? Cause you don't want people to think it's the same beer. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. So that data definitely there's, I mean, there's just countless things in terms of value um, with that. So that's, that's cool. Okay. Um, so you touched on this a little bit earlier, but I'd love to hear a little bit more about it from you. Um, so different bars and breweries obviously are going to have, different takes on how their mug club should run. Um, for example, uh, you said, you know, coffee shop type punch card and then a more traditional mug club like what you do where there's the incentives. And yeah. then there's also the the third one that um, where people pay up front to be able to have access to a special special pass and get discounts. Yeah, it's kind of the cost from BJ's model, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I think um, I think Dogfish Head does it actually. Does it kind of like that? But um, I'd love to hear a little bit on um, some insight on when you think it makes more sense for those different kinds of um, different kinds of mug clubs. Yeah, for sure. So I think just getting one out of the way. I'm not a big fan of the whole pay up front and that get benefits over time. Uh, I view a bar or even a brewery as a very customer-friendly environment. I'm not going to ask people walking to my bar to pay what would essentially be an atrocious cover just for the privilege of walking around with a certain mug and getting 10% off their beer going forward. So for me, gotcha. that's not a great model. I mean, you may have this very specialty type of place where it makes sense for you, um, but for me, it's, it's not a good model. Uh, I think the loyalty program, which you know, is kind of the punch card model, I think that makes sense when your expertise is not in craft beer. Uh, we have one customer um, that has 365 taps as part of their bar, uh, which is amazing, right? So they've got this huge variety here, and they want you to try all these different beers, and they don't want people just cranking through the, you know, the five to ten that they already know. So that's a perfect customer for a traditional mug club, right? That is, I value as a business owner um, you coming in and trying different things, and it's worth it for me to incentivize you to go through all these different taps, even if there's 365 of them. Um, but if you're more of a kind of a, a traditional bar, and maybe you have 10 taps, and maybe you got another 20 or 30 cans and bottles, you know, you're really not going to be able to inspire awe by saying, hey, drink 100 different beers, because you, you don't have them anyway, and you don't have the wide variety. Like, I'm not excited to try a Coors Original, a Coors Light, a Miller, a Miller Light, a Bud, a Bud Light, and so on and so forth, right? Right, Probably right. means craft beers, right? It means micro brews. So for me, you know, if you're kind of serving the traditionals, and maybe you've got a few that are a little different, the loyalty program might be better. Because what you care about is, I don't care if you drink 
10 different beers or 10 Coors Lights or 10 IPAs, it doesn't really matter. I just want you to keep coming back day in and day out. Uh, so gotcha. that's your model. Then I think it makes a lot of sense to do the loyalty program and you know the punch card approach. Uh, and the way that works in the app is that we just put a counter in the app. So it tells you you've drank two of 20, five of 20, 17 of 20. Once you hit 20, it tells you you've won your prize, go collect it, and the counter restarts to zero. It's just like a punch card. Uh, gotcha. That program doesn't have the tiers or the other stuff. It's just you know you set a number that you think will be attractive to your customers, and then they work towards it. Um, but you know my my bar is a tap house. Yes, it's in the name, the Petty Tap House. We have the most taps of any other bar in the city. So for us, the craft beer is a draw. It's a reason people come to us. So for us, it's a much better fit to have the variety play and encourage people to try different beers. Um, because if they try different beers and they like it, odds are good it's something that we may be the only ones in town that have it. Right, so it's all the more gotcha. reason to come back to us again um, because they tried that different beer. We're one of the few places that have it and they like it. So that's that's kind of how I draw the line. Um, it's the variety you have, and not and in addition to the variety, it's how much you lay out craft brews and micro brews. So, so a lot of it is basically um, the people who want to get you to try as much of their beers as you can. Those are yes. the ones that are going to do better with the um, the one that's not the punch card. That's right. Which, and then the, obviously, the, the and so on so forth. yes, exactly. And the people who are more concerned about, I don't care what you drink, as long as you're drinking 10 of them, I'm good. Yeah, um, a really good point there is, and the loyalty program, the punch card is why I think is really effective for breweries. Because if you're a brewery and you have a tasting room, you just want people to come in and buy another growler and another six pack or, you know, even a keg if you sell those out in your place. Um, and variety is not important. You may only make eight beers, but you want people to keep, keep coming in and buying those eight beers and telling their friends and telling them to come in and buy them. You want to make sure your growler is already in, always in someone's fridge or they bring it to a party. Uh, so in that example, I definitely think the loyalty program makes sense. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, um, tell me a little bit about where can we, where can we, where can people learn more about mug clubs and uh, we'll go from there. Absolutely. So, I mean, the, the best place to learn about uh, mug clubs and the product we sell, uh, which is our you know digital technology, is our website, mugclubs.com. You have a ton of information there about all the different offerings of our products, uh, the pricing, how you sign up, which is really easy. You can do it all online, uh, how the technology works, how you manage it as, uh, as a bar owner or a bar manager. So, you know, mugclubs.com will give you a lot of information about it. We'll let you just join up right there and then. Um, also on the website, there's a, you know, Click here for more information link, then I'll get you right to, to me and the other folks who work for me. And we can offer any specific questions you have about the technology. Um, and also, obviously, there's a lot of information on the website about how a mug club can be beneficial to your business, too. Uh, whether you're a brewery or, uh, or a bar, uh, we also explain how we use marketing collateral to help you attract more customers and to increase your customer loyalty and get you, uh, the folks that come to your bar or your brewery to actually join your mug club and use the technology and so on and so forth. So. Um, that website, mudclubs.com, is a good place to get a lot of information about uh, AR product and also just how to run a mud club in general. Cool. Okay, awesome. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to bring up? Or um, I think I think we're good, but if you got something else, please, by all means, mention it. No, it was my pleasure. Um, you know, as you said, I'm a barner myself. You know, I know how challenging it is to implement new things. Um, we intentionally built the technology to make it as simple to use as possible. Every time my developers came back with the idea, the first thing we talked about was how simple and easy will this be for the customer to use, whether it's the bar owner manager or the bartenders or the servers. You know, if it's not simple, we can't have it. Bars are a fast-paced environment. We need to make this easy to use. So I would offer that, you know, we've intentionally built something that's really simple, made from the perspective of, of people who work in a bar and who own a bar. Um, and that, you know, we, we really encourage people to give it a shot. Uh, our pricing is very reasonable. We'll work with you on, you know, giving you a free month trial, that sort of thing. Um, but you know, it's one of those things that's kind of almost become cliche for the price of a cup of coffee. You can, you know, help save someone's life. Um, you know, right. our product, uh, for the price of our subscription per month, if you can sell one more beer every day or two, you'll make more money than you would have without us. So, uh, awesome. if you want an opportunity here, give us a shot and we'll be there to help you every step of the way. Okay, perfect. Well, thanks for your, again for your time, John. Um, I will be in touch. All right. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Talk to you later. Bye.